Hi, this is uh, Archie's Cabin, um, Christmas Day 2021. <clears throat> I don't think I've, it's only 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning here in Canada, Southern Ontario, but uh, I've heard more joy, seen more joy and heard more joy and blessings and happy people in the last three hours than I've seen in the whole of 2021. Christmas Day 2021 will be among the highlights of my life because it it ends an awesome an awesome year made dark by the the attempts of men to carve out their own destinies destinies politicians in particular I uh, pray for them poor guys they struggle the media uh, they've just lost souls these last year aren't they <laughs> but this is Christmas Day and everybody's passed. Now walking down, walking down this street up here. This is I live up, up over the top of that hill, and people are sounding their horns and waving at me and shouting out their windows, "Merry Christmas!" I just, it's a, a grey Canadian wet morning. It reminds me of Scotland. All the snow that I showed you the last time I made a video, it all went within about two days. Two or three inches of snow just disappeared, um, and the snow forecast for tomorrow and through the week. It'll come, believe me, you'll see videos with snow in it. But um, it's Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to anybody who's watching this, whatever whatever time of year you're looking, whatever, um, wherever you are, whatever you are and whoever you are, whatever you believe or don't believe, God intended to make you happy today. God intended to make you happy today. Can you credit that? The God you don't believe in, the God you rejected in your life because somebody hurt you or because you just thought it was fashionable when you were a young man not to believe in God. But one way or another, he wanted to bless you this day 2,000 years ago. I'm just trying to get a nice river in the background. The rivers are flooded. There's a car coming, so I'm just going to pause. God wanted to bless you today. 2,000 years ago, God Almighty, the God men blame for all their troubles, so loved the world that he burst that love out and gave, sent, gave his only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to this world to save them and to reconcile them with himself, to make peace with them to bring them joy and peace and comfort, to help them in their miseries and in their joys, to make life better for them, to bring them into contact and fellowship indeed, you know that close fellowship with the living God, to show his face to them, to smile on them. That's what God did, this God you have no time for. And this, this God's smile, 2,000 years ago, this giving of his son that brought all this Christmas cheer into the world that's here today. Because everybody's trying to emulate God today, even though they may not appreciate it. They're all trying to copy God, giving a better gift than everybody else. All trying to outdo one another, giving the best gifts they can give. And some of the gifts are given are not given with heart, but every gift God gives is given with the utmost gentle genuineness and love and care. We go around, we say, we Christians say, remember the reason for the season. Um, don't be like many other men who compartmentalise things in their life and they can shut God out one day and cry on him for help the next. Don't be like that. Discover the reason for the season. Go read the Gospels. Read the Gospels in a good Bible, the New King James Version or the NIV or the ESV. Go read the Bible in, a good, in the language of your choice and hear the message of the Gospel. It's the most astounding method, message still today the world has ever known. Today on the news I saw world leaders all set, getting on edge with one another. One wants to show how strong he is against the other. You know what God did for us? He showed himself in weakness. He came into the world as an innocent, helpless baby. You know, he could have brought armies of angels. He could have rained fire and brimstone on his enemies and took his friends to himself. Instead of that, 
while we were still enemies. God loved us and God expressed his care for us by coming to us while we were his enemies and raining his love on us. That's the God you need to get to know. He wants to get to know you. He says, come on, let's reason together. God says that to you. Come on, let's reason together. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's, go. let's discuss this. Let's find out what the problem is and root it out and deal with it for you. God's not frightened of a discussion with an atheist, you know. I think atheists are afraid of a discussion with him. I'm going to keep walking here because it's getting cold. But will you think about these things this Christmas? Will you give it some thought? Give God a moment of your time for giving us, even if it's just to thank Him for giving us such a wonderful day. I came to Christ in the August of 1961. I came to Christ in August of 1961 or thereabouts. Exactly. What I do remember is the first Christmas that I had as a believer brought up in a communist home. God wasn't really there very much. I went to a friend's house, dear Bobby's house, he'll not remember, but I remember. There were about 20 of us or 30 of us in his wee house. And we were all sitting about the floor, we're all teenagers sitting about the floor. This is the other side of this river, by the way. Uh, they're all sitting about the, the floor and chatting to one another and the noise is, the noise is kind of, you know what it's like, a bunch of teenagers get together, it's noisy, happy, it's uh, midnight, Christmas night and we're all very, very happy people and we're just, we've all come to Christ, all of us came to Christ within a few years and we're all thrilled with the, the joy of knowing Jesus Christ and the peace he gives and trying to get to know God and understand and read the Bible and search him out and discover all the wonders of the gospel. I've been doing that now for over 60 years, never been disappointed. I recommend it to you, mate. If you're having a bad life, get in touch with Jesus Christ. But I'm lying on the floor, sitting on the floor at the fireside and there's this fellow in his house we were in, his speakers all over the place. That was pretty radical in these days, the guy was a musician. <laughs> And I suddenly become aware of this rousing piece of music. What on earth is that? Right, I was into guitar, I played guitar all my life. Thought, what in the world is uh, what's that? What is, what is that noise I'm hearing? You know, it was strange noise to me. I'd been brought up in a simple home. You remember that? I'm old enough to remember a record players where it came out into the public domain. We had a tiny wee dance set major. Nobody will listen to me or remember that. But hold on, I give this guy a lift. Um, so, um, I hear this music and it was, do you know this, the only word I could describe then and now is heavenly, heavenly music. And I thought, what am I listening to? All I knew was three chord wonders, yeah, you know, G, D and C, <laughs> E, A and D, yeah, yeah, I knew them all, all three of them. Every pop song had these three chords in it when I was a kid and um, as a young teenager, I was listening to the Hallelujah Chorus by Handel, George Frederick Handel. Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And I could make out these words in this classical piece of music with orchestral backing. I'd never heard anything so arousing, so thrilling, especially since I had come to Christ. And I heard the whole, listened to the whole thing. And I, I said, hey, what's that music? What's that music? I asked everybody, what, tell me, somebody tell me, what is this? What is this? And the, the guy Bob came and said, that's the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. What's that? What is that? Do you know what it is? Go find out. Go get it. Go on YouTube. Google it. Handel's Messiah. Don't never mind if you spell it right. You get dozens and dozens of copies. And all of them, some of them are better than others. Sometimes it's just a wee group of people trying to do it. And they don't do it very well, but... And sometimes you get the full, the best orchestras in the world. It is still among the best music, rated the best music in the world. George Frederick Handel, I soon got to know him. I soon got to know all his music. I preferred Bach in the longer term in terms of music, but I got to know George Frederick Handel. He went through a difficult time in his composition period and his musician's experience. He went through a difficult time. He um, found, I don't, it doesn't matter what the details were, 
but in seeking God, he was inspired to write the story of Christ, the story of the world, the story of men and music. All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's the gospel. The Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquities of us all. Will you come to him this Christmas? I've got friends that gave their life to Jesus on Christmas Day. The Lord would like to see you. The Lord wants to speak to you. He sent his son for you. He wanted to give you a Christmas present. New life in Christ. Eternal life. Please notice this. I'm done. Please notice this. I never told you to go to church. I never told you to go to church. I told you to come to Jesus. Anybody that speaks to you and tells you you need to go to church, you tell them, yeah, fine, I'll come to church, but you should have told me to come to Jesus first. Come to Jesus. That's what will get you to heaven. No church can get you there. But when you become, when you come to Jesus, you will find a Bible-believing church prayerful church, church that loves Jesus Christ. Their name doesn't matter. It's probably going to be more old-fashioned than new, but it might be new as well. Lots of wonderful churches springing up every I go to a new church, only 10 years old, 15 years old. Wonderful people, 200, 300 people in that church. Um, in a wee country town. Lots of people. I went church and over 200 people there. Yeah, when I was a pastor. Grew young people, young families, old people, young people, children. We had 16 babies, I think it was about 18 months or something. I tell you, churches are not what the press would like you to think about. Don't trust the press very much these days. The truck, the struggle, pray for them. Listen, it's Christmas Day 2021, 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm out for a walk, and I'm praying that God will use this wee video to touch somebody's heart. If it, if it touches you, you only drop me a line, tell me you enjoyed it, tell me you were blessed by it, tell me you'd like to speak to me more, leave your number, I'll call you, I'll write to you, send me an email, I'll talk to you, communicate with you, tell you how you can find Jesus Christ. That's what Christmas is about, being reconciled to God by his Son. The Lord bless you and make his face shine upon you this Christmas. This is Archie's Cabin. Bye-bye just now.